All right, we have a, a special guest here introing the show today. Right, Craig? Yes. Welcome to the show, everybody. What, wait, hang on a second. Before you go, just welcome to Smartless. Enjoy yours. I don't know. Okay. So welcome to Smartless. Okay, that was good. But again, Craig, it doesn't seem like you're really welcoming me. <laughs> how, hey, how are your kids, Will? They're really good. Have you, when's the last time you saw them? What month are we? <laughs> Wait, by the way, we're still, Craig, we're still doing the intro. So just say welcome to Smartless. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Smartless. <laughs> Smart. Hi. There's everybody. Oh. Hi, Sean. Hi, guys. Sean. How are you today? Listener, uh, Sean is busy uh, doing incredible work in Chicago per it's a very, nice. very tough to please critic, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Sean's got a very nice review. That's very and nice. In the Chicago all, Tribune. We're all That's excited. Very nice. And um, when Thanks. do we get to when do we get to see it? Should we? I'll, do you want people coming out to Chicago to see it, or do you want us to wait till New York? Or do you it's entirely both? up to you. You don't even. Here's the other thing. You yeah. don't even have to see it because here's no, why. No, I want to. I don't. I I'm not a. I'm not a huge fan of when other friends are like, "You've got to see my movie." Right. No, oh, you got to come see you're my not play. That guy. No, you're not that guy. Yeah. So I really truly. Uh, don't. Well, can I ask, can I suggest this? Is there a world where when you're done and you come back home yeah. that we just do a dinner with our usual crew and then, Sean, we have you, kind of like a salon, we'll have like, you stand yes. up and just do some choice monologues? <laughs> or you can do the whole like, thing. Or I do guess, the whole thing as long as... Oh, God, that would be yeah. great. But just privately, so it's just us? I could do like a speed line through. Speed through would be great and maybe just, I mean, not too much blocking, like a little bit so we get a sense of the space, yeah, obviously. Sure. And Will, can I double back to your yeah. use of the word salon? Did you, mm -hmm. did you throw a salon in I there? I sure did. I what sure does did. that mean? Um, well, look it up. I mean, I mean, I'm familiar with a salon wall. A salon wall is uh, the wall with a bunch of pictures all put next mm -hmm. to one another that form a larger singular square. Is that right? Um, I think it is. Well, did you get a haircut? I did. Yeah, you look got a body, that. a body cut too, and a fat face cut too. You look great, man. <laughs> What happened? Are you, are you sick? Some of the fat from your face. Thank you. I yeah. love it when people say that. You say, thank you so much. Thank you know you. what's so crazy? So when I go to the theater, I have to have a COVID test every week, right? Sure. Uh -huh. And so still, and so I missed this one day. So they said, oh, well, you have to just go to one of these like free clinic places. Okay. So I Google it. It says you can come in for, you know, just like walk in. You don't have to make an appointment. So I walk in and I'm not kidding you guys. There's nobody there. Mm -hmm. And the woman standing right when you walk in goes, do you have an appointment? No. <laughs> and she goes, uh, you, ha you have to make an appointment. I go, but it said walk in. She goes, yeah, but you still have to make one. So you can go back outside and scan the little digital thing on your phone. And then I go, you're joking me right now. She goes, no. <laughs> I go, you want me to walk outside? Yeah. So I walk out. I go, watch this. And I looked at her through the glass, through the door. <laughs> never never I broke eye phone. contact. No, this I sounds like phone. a real Bateman. <laughs> I know, I know. I was so angry. I took the big picture of the thing, and I'm filling it out, just giving her evil looks while I'm filling this out. I log in all my information. I walk in. She goes, can I help you? Uh, <laughs> I go, yeah. <laughs> she wasn't even kidding. And she goes, do you have an appointment? Was it Edie McClurg from <laughs> Ferris Bueller? I go, wait, wait this is wait, not happening. This trains? is like a joke. So she goes, yeah, I have an appointment. She goes, right over here, to a line that doesn't exist. And then this oh, guy man. at the front desk, he's like, do you have an appointment? I go, yes, I do. She's like, great. And then he tells me to go, wait, in this other line, there's no line. It's just a thing to go get tested. <laughs> How good. And then you go outside and you look up at the, when you finally leave, you look up and you look back at the place and you look at the sign and it says, Kafka COVID tests. Kafka. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, hmm. How have you guys been? What's new? It's been a minute <sighs> since we've all been hanging out. I know. I know. I know. You guys were so kind to... Um, let us all take a couple weeks off while I was in tech for Tracy. Tech is when you light the whole play and you don't have to be stand short there. with the, don't be testy with Tracy <laughs> right then. Like you're exhausted to have to tell her is that what tech is. You're like Tracy is technical. Really cool. <sighs> anyway, so thank you guys. So that's why we haven't seen each other in a while. Sorry, I just want to go. I, this is a little off topic, but Jake, you've gone back to uh, penis hair. <laughs> 
What? Oh, I know. Remember when Jimmy said the top of your hair? Yeah, it, it looks did. like the meatus. That did leave a mark. Yeah, yeah it's um. So, listener, um, what happens <laughs> what you, here? What are you doing? It's, there's a direct part right in the middle. Well, it's a double cowlick. Okay, I, I'm okay. not. I'm not upstairs styling that and creating <laughs> a double cowlick. But uh-huh. yeah, it is uh, for these. Uh, for those familiar with the circumcised, it does look um, like a cowlick that twice. Yeah, there's a uh, well. I'm assuming what Jimmy meant when he said penis hair. Do you think he was talking about, because, listener, we've got a double cowlick here, right? So we've got a, a, a cascade on one side and another one, on the, like an M. They got okay? it. They got it. They, they got, got it. it. Okay. So what do you, what all part they gotta of the do, penis do you think? All they got to do is there's look a, at. But there's a lot of the... parts. Let me finish. I'm on something really <laughs> crass here. Oh, boy. Um, what part of the penis, uh, there's so many parts of the penis that, that could be this, uh, I'm going to say penis one more time. No, no, if they look at the art right now to the podcast that they're listening to, they can see what we're talking about. Look, right. either way, you look like a dickhead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Listen, listen, oh, we got to get to it terrible. because I know it's so bad. We, uh, I tell you what's so good, though, is, is our guest today. Boy, they're they're not gonna like this segue right off the. Well, uh, they're gonna like they're gonna like it just fine. They're gonna like it just fine because our guest is a very very funny person, oh. and uh, knows what it's like to uh, be very funny all the time and likes to laugh, huh. and that's because our our friend our guest today has participated in so many comedic films and TV shows. It's almost pointless to name them all. It's almost funny. But you, you see, Jason, you might know him. You might know him from The Office. Oh. Huh. You might know him from, uh, what else what you might know him That's from? It's Mr. Corral. Is it Mr. Hang on Corral? a second. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm getting, I'm working my way there. So you might know him from The Office. You might know him from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You might know him from uh, I've got Pineapple it. Express. You got might it. know him from any one of these movies. You might got know it. him from his new show, Killing It, on Peacock. And Sean, uh. you just might know him from college because it's none other than Craig Whoa. Robinson. Oh, my God. Sean. Yes. There he is. Oh, look at <laughs> He's got a picture of himself. Behind. He's got a painting of himself behind himself. Oh, listener, we have a two shot. <laughs> Craig Robinson. Well, listen. First of all, how crazy is this to be on here with uh, with Sean? So walk us through this a little bit, Craig. I know Craig's so sick of me. Too. Every time I see Craig, I tell him the same goddamn thing. He's like, "Yeah, Sean, when are you going to drop it? It's enough." But for Tracy, who doesn't know, or other or listener, me, new to or, me, or these guys. So, Craig, well, you tell it if you want. We went to college together. We were both piano majors at Illinois State University. Well, let him tell it. Now Sorry. you're telling it again. We went to college together, and we were both piano majors at Illinois State University. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and I. I mean, down to we were in the same classroom. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean was making everybody laugh. Well, But likewise. especially when we'd be in the back just... <laughs> Quiet, not supposed to talk. That was that was the best. Yeah. Now, Craig, uh, are you as uh, um, impressive as Sean is uh, on the? Oh, on Craig's the, on the keys? amazing penis. A thousand percent less impressive. Sean no, is, a, is, is no. a super genius. You're but you incredible. are a major. Um, like uh, you don't just major in piano playing without being somewhat impressive. I'm, I mean, I, I do my thing, but no, yep. no, Sean will. Sean can sit down and, and, and play with a orchestra. I can sit down and play with a gospel choir. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, still, that that's would better than raise I can eyebrows. Do. That's yeah. very impressive. Uh, I'm more by my ear. Yeah. I do you remember that song you wrote? Someone's fucking my lady. Someone's fucking my lady. Fucking my girl. Remember that? I did song? it doggy style. Of course. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is that? Did you perform that with the 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 um when you used to do that? You and Jerry Minor used to do that thing yes, together. Did you absolutely. guys? Absolutely. And you would perform that, and then he, it would be revealed. That it was him who was fucking your lady? <laughs> no, no, no. Jerry would be uh, Jerry's L Witherspoon and Chucky. Yeah, uh, I played Chucky, and uh, and Jerry um, and, and L Witherspoon would be like, you know, I don't mean to be suspicious, but last night when my woman come home, so he's assuming somebody's <laughs> fucking his lady, so he sings about it, and I'm I'm like, somebody's fucking your lady, somebody's fucking your girl, and then in the middle of the song, he's like, Chucky. I found, I found a piece of paper in my woman's pants pocket. I'm like, what does it say? He said, it's a phone number. And I said, call it. And so he, he's like, it's ringing. So, you know, it's back and forth. And then uh, the phone rings and I answer the phone. Uh-huh. He's like, are you fucking my leg? Yes, I'm fucking young. And, uh, you know, Jerry uh, explained this to me, Jerry Minor. What's up, brother? 
uh, he was like, uh, he told me the concept, and you know, we was it was I, I cracked up. I think it was based on a, on the R. Kelly and uh, <laughs> R. Kelly would have Ron Isley in his videos as Mr. Big, so it was kind of based on that. It was such a genius. When Jerry song. told me a lot, even long before that, he said, "I'm gonna make you famous." <laughs> Here, here's my Craig Robinson journey, just and then everyone yeah, want to hear it. Chime in. So we met in college. We were music majors in college. Then we started dancing to Janet Jackson in the hallways. <laughs> we, would, we would dance Rhythm Nation with each other. And then we, then we were in like... It was never Janet. supposed to come out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we would. We would we'd do five, four, three, two, one. Who do you think led that charge? I'm going to give you one guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then one of the funniest things, I was in a play called Love for Love by William Cos. Sure. Cons, no, no, sure, Cons. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a restoration comedy. Yeah. And Craig was my understudy. So in the piece. play, I had like one scene and I had to play the harpsichord. And as my understudy, and he had to wear a powdered wig and like a whole <laughs> regalia, like the 17th century. It was one of the <laughs> <laughs> funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen. All together once, once more. I can't believe you remember that. I wrote a song and Craig sang it. Now, oh now my Sean, God. Sean is busy using uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this education and talent. Uh, Craig, when's the last time you really put your musical degree to work? Oh, uh, two nights ago. Oh, yeah, you're always playing out, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I play, I play and sing in my comedy act. Yeah, <laughs> you got very serious when you said that. <laughs> it's a serious act. Yeah, where is the act currently, and uh, can we go see it? I'll be at the Laugh Factory this evening. What here in Los Angeles? Here in Los Angeles. Oh wow! At the the Late Show. So boom, you're on the list. Just like what that. times that start? Nine thirty. Uh, oh, oh, Jason's. He's, yeah, he's, he's no. two hours into the into the yeah. heavy, the <laughs> yeah, heavy the gummy, heavy, yeah. the second gummy, which is <laughs> you don't want me behind a wheel. But nine thirty. Uh, I tell you what, May four at the Troubadour, Craig Robinson and the Nasty Delicious, and you will get to see my master's degree. On I Florida would love today. to see that. I, that's and that's my birthday. Come oh, on, down. May the fourth be with you. <sighs> what's what's nice? Well, uh, what's uh, what's the Nasty Delicious? That's a uh, a multi member band. Yes, there are. Uh, Nine of us. Let me see if I can. Nine? Yeah, oh, yeah. Because I got the horn section, including Reggie Hines, Winston, horns? Winston Bird, and uh, Lakeisha Benjamin. These are all, and then uh, my drummer's Asa Watkins. Sure. Benji Alonso is my conga player. And then David Sampson on guitar. And then my brother, Chris Robb on key synthesizer. And uh, several of us do voice. Mm -hmm. That's great. Your actual brother. My actual brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, wait, Craig, go, I'm just going to back up for two seconds. I also remember uh, uh, you called me at my mom's house in Glen Ellen, Illinois, when you saw me in a McDonald's commercial, and you were still a teacher, I think, and you're like, how did you do that? I'm like, what? Mm. You said, how do you get a commercial? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, and I was like, you got to get your headshots, you got to make a resume. And we talked on the phone, I don't know if you remember that, for a long time, I must have been I don't know, 20, 19 years old, 20 years old, 21, something like that. Remember that? Do you remember that, Craig? No. No. Craig. <laughs> so moving on. That's my favorite part of the story is that Craig doesn't Craig, remember, do you remember Craig, do you remember teaching anybody? I used to teach. I taught kindergarten through eighth grade. Come on. Yeah, in Chicago and yeah. Indiana. What? Yeah, I wanted to get into that. So, Craig, so hang on a second. So let's back up even further, and we're going to get into the teaching. Yeah. Your mom, was your mom a teacher or is a teacher? She was a teacher. She taught at uh, Whitney Young High School. Uh, she was uh, my music teacher. She was your music teacher. So no wonder you and your brother are both uh, musically inclined. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our whole house was, uh, you know, pianos, drums, wow. horns, all, all kind of stuff was in there. It was like a, a music, music hall. That's wild. That's so okay, cool. so, so your mom was a music teacher, so then you... You grew up with music all around, and did you guys all, did you jam out like everybody in the family, you and your brother? Jam out, shut up. Uh, Come I on, man. I thought everybody at Christmas, like I thought every family in the world was like playing and singing harmony until uh, one Christmas I was in L.A. and it was just quiet. I was like, and I went and got the keyboard out the car and they were like, what? Christmas carols at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> so. Sean, you keep threatening to play the piano at our at our Christmas gatherings. Uh, yeah. It hasn't happened yet. No, I know. it's not going to happen. Yeah, Are you well, kidding? Yeah, I was. Can gonna... we not make your deal or something like that? Is it a deal thing? <laughs> no. Yeah, you guys have to make a deal with me. 
No, I uh, yeah, I was gonna pull out the. I was gonna get a piano at the last. Christmas yeah, I want to hear some happening. Christmas Christmas carols. It kind of like stops a party. No, it doesn't. It stops a party. Remember one time at Jimmy's house, at Jimmy Bro's house, you got on the piano. Yeah. Uh, which was fun. And Jason, remember that we were all like, oh, Jason, don't, nobody tell Jason, don't invite Jason. I think Amanda was even there too, his wife. But everybody's like, don't mention it to Jason. But Will, it stopped the party. People are like, oh, that's nice. So, and then everybody goes, and then everybody goes home when it's done. When, yeah, when you stop playing piano, then everybody goes home. You're right. It's like when somebody goes, hey, watch this video. And as soon as you pull a video, video out, out. with somebody, <laughs> everything's over. I and did that gone. last night and that exact thing happened. Wait, what happened, Craig? I did that. I pulled out a video and I started showing people because I was, I'm so proud of this show, and I, this one scene, <laughs> and then and then the lights went off, and they, everybody left home. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it on purpose or no? No, no. no. <laughs> I did it not knowing that that's what happens when you show a video. Yeah. It's true. It's a conversation <laughs> ender. We'll be right back. Hey, guess what? We get support from Noom, all right? Noom understands that everyone's weight loss journey is unique, and what works for someone else doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you, and that is why Noom Weight uses a psychology-based approach that adapts to your lifestyle. Its flexible approach focuses on progress, not perfection, and allows you to work toward your goals at a pace that's comfortable for you. Sounds good, right? There's more. Noom's personalized lessons help you gain confidence with practical knowledge you can employ right away. With one-on-one -on -one coaching, you'll always have guidance and support on your journey. Noom Weight is empowering and flexible. It's not stressful, listener. An off day is okay and won't impede your progress. Noom will help you get back on track. Remember progress, not perfection. I love Noom because, it's, because it's, it helps me work towards my goals. It helps me reach everything that I, I, I'm looking to reach. It, if I want to lose some weight, I use Noom Weight. It's perfect. I, I, I just think it's great for everybody. I apologize that my... I love Noom. Noom has changed the way... It's, cha it's, it's, a, it's a psychological shift. It's, it changes the way that I approach yeah. food. It's such a yeah. different thing. So I love yeah, it yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I apologize. Listener, um, they're happy with their Noom weight. Um, start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash smartless. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash smartless. Hey, I don't know if you guys have heard about Tiki Brand, but they give us support. How you doing, listeners? This is Will Arnett talking to you about Tiki Brand. Yeah, go ahead. Tiki Brand lights are something I've really enjoyed. It helped uh, improve my backyard experience with my whole family and friends. Huh. Hell, when it's a nice summer night, I like to get the Tiki Brand lights in the back. Why? Mosquitoes. Well, skeeters, man, yeah, they've been a problem around these parts, that's for sure. But I got them Tiki Brand lights up there, and, well, the, the Tiki Brand Bite Fighter LED string lights not only beautify my backyard, but also provide mosquito repellency. The ambience, I'll bet, is incredible because these string of lights, I mean, they are proven mosquito repellents. Uh, it's what the brand is known for, but this is a one-of-a-kind innovation. No, no other string light brand can, can offer this kind of unique benefit. Tiki also gives you a sense of freedom, right? To go out and enjoy your living environment, friend? Well, this is Will Arnett for Tiki Brand you Bite Fighter LED that. string lights. And uh, let me just say that the repellency diffuser pods last up to 200 hours, and this equates to... Uh, now, let me just do it if I carry the zero and I'll get yeah. into this. How many days? Equate to about, by my, <laughs> and it's just simple math. I'm just a simple folk here, but about equates about 90 days. Okay, day. how many it's hours per day, though? About 2.4 hours per day, Jason. So this Bite Fighter diffuser pod, it can, it can be replaced, I would imagine, after the 200-hour lifespan. I'll bet it can be switched off, yeah. allowing you, friend, to enjoy the glow <laughs> without wasting repellent. Well, that's not that. You're, you're, you're absolutely right about that, plus mm -hmm. the configuration be customized for protection in yards or on decks and patios. And let me tell you something, if they couldn't be, well, then my name wouldn't be Will Arnett for Tiki Brand Bite Fighter LED string lights. Boy, it sounds like these Bite Fighter lights have really improved your backyard experience, huh? <laughs> and uh, They they sure have. And that's yeah. why every time I got them on, it just makes me think, Tiki Brand Bite Fighter LED string lights. So turn on the ambience, turn off mosquitoes. Available at tikibrand.com. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. People don't always realize that physical symptoms like headaches, teeth grinding, and even digestive issues can be indicators of stress. And let's not forget about doom scrolling, sleeping too little, sleeping too much, undereating, overeating. 
I'm stressed out every single day. I'm in the middle of doing a play right now. Uh, it's eight shows a week. It's the first thing I think of when I get up is how am I going to do? I'm gonna, I got to eat right. I got to sleep right. I got to do physical therapy. I got to do the show. I'm screaming. How's my voice? All those things. And uh, stress, so stress shows up in all kinds of ways for different people. And in a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less, and grind all the time, here's your reminder to take care of yourself, do less, and maybe try some therapy. Therapy's always helped me uh, come back, uh, be focused, uh, come back and be present in the moment. It really, really helps to help meditate. All kinds of different therapies can help, but BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Smartless listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash smartless. All right, back to the show. Uh, Craig, so let me, so, so your mom's a teacher, a uh, music teacher, you and your brother were musically inclined. You were surrounded by it your whole time. So then you go to college and major in music with Sean Hayes. And, um, and Sean, you had already done Will and Grace by that point, right? I forget the <laughs> timeline on that. but No, McDonald's. He had been selling McDonald's, the cribs. Okay. He'd done McDonald's as a sitcom? I don't I, Listen, I'm not paying attention. Yeah. Most Exclusive of to the McRib campaign, I believe. Yeah, I had so. already done Will and Grace. McRib, the sitcom. <laughs> I want to hear about, like, hungry, young, not knowing anything about the business, Craig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. so he calls Sean and so, yeah. So that's what I'm getting to. Take your time. So, so you time, go... Will. Yep. You go to college, and then what is that moment when you graduate college? Because then you become a music teacher. How did you make the leap from being a music major at Illinois it's State? That's a good question. It's a great question. To coming out to California and working as an actor. Well, I called Sean's mother's house. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember you that remember. phone call. Uh, okay. The yeah, I, yeah, but to that point, uh, Craig, I had the same question. That I can't believe I waited 30 years to ask you. Which was, what was that? What, exactly what Will just asked. Like, I remember that phone call. I'm not offended that you don't. But I was like, oh, that's so cool. Craig wants to get into acting. But what made you want to do that? Um, I was chosen by comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> comedy chose me. Comedy uh, chose uh, call it bitten by the bug, whatever you want. But I was, cho I, I was in college, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do stand-up. Um, I think my father, who was a like serious attorney, serious uh, uh, a corporate attorney, I think he inadvertently sparked it one day because he was like, because I was always so silly, and you know, just he's like, you know, people get paid to be silly like that, and I was like, excuse me, <laughs> comedians, people get paid to do this stuff, and uh, that that was one of the things that sat with me. Then in college, as I'm. Uh, Feeling this comedy button, like like comedians were like superheroes to me. Yeah. Like you could see them, you just couldn't touch them, anything. But then, then I saw some people doing comedy in college. And that's what made me go, okay, I'm I'm getting to this. Because mm -hmm. there was people I could see and touch and knew. And like, what do you do? You have an act? How do you do that? So then I once I graduated, I was full on. I had, even by that point, I had driven to Chicago and back to go to like the laugh, the funny firm to see Richard Jenny speak just on a Saturday afternoon or something. Um, but were you working? Were you working on stand-up material at that point? At that point in, in college, I had like a couple of jokes. I would go, uh, Sean, you remember this? Uh, the the theater department would have these like Tuesday night, like almost like an open mic, but there was no mic. It was just somebody would come up and it was called Theater of Ted. Theater of Ted. Ted Theater. And, and people yeah. just perform with them. And I, and I got up the nerve and went up and kind of played the piano, messed around, mm -hmm. and told some jokes. And uh, the, the first joke I think I ever wrote was, uh, was a poem. It's like sometimes my father, you know, he comforts me. He'll say, stop crying. And I want to do this poem for you. Stop crying. Stop crying right now before I give you something to cry about. You're making a scene. You know that it's wrong. Just wait till we get home. And then, you know, we got a little reaction, whatever, and a couple of months, and I start. So anyway, go to, I graduate, and then I immediately I'm hitting the open mics and going to Second City, and, you know, things kind of progress from there. And at some point, uh, uh, my buddy Owen Smith, who's a, a big-time Hollywood writer now, he goes, uh, he's like, you probably, uh, you know, get on a sitcom or whatever. I forget what we talked about, but it was something about made me go, 
if I go into acting, I want to know what I'm doing. So I started, I went to Act One, I went to Second City, I went to uh, Audition Center. Mm -hmm. Then I did get Deaf Comedy Jam from doing mm -hmm. comedy, what have you. That got me some eyes in Hollywood. I forced a manager to tell me I need to move to Hollywood. Like, you think I should move here, right? You think I should? You think I should? <laughs> and I ended up winning this contest. I, I, won, this, I won a few contests, but the, um, oh, I did a, got a development deal. I went to Montreal and got a development deal. Oh, you went to Just for Laughs? Went to Just for Laughs. Yeah, and the idea, it was New Faces. Came back, I went on 14 meetings, and I'm getting a development deal from one of them. And uh, that's what eventually got me to move to Los Angeles. Did Sean say anything on that first phone call that was helpful at all? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure he did. Sean was always very positive and very, sure. very helpful. Probably. So, Craig, but I'm, I'm trying to go along the time because we're, we're, all, we're all the same age, roughly. Jason's the oldest here, obviously. 72. <laughs> but, you, but you, Sean, and I are about the same age. We're all, I'm 51. Sean's 51. 51. You're 51 as well. I'll be 51 in October, yeah. Okay, so uh, we're all in the same ballpark, and I, you know, whatever, 50 and young, play, and obviously skew way younger, and, and <laughs> have lots, and a big presence on uh, social media, so obviously in touch with young people too, and if you just reach out and look for my handles and subscribe here, but the point is this. <laughs> The point is this. Subscribe. There are a few. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> Nothing made me sound older than that. Um, uh, the point is, the point is, what are those gap? How long were you teaching before you, because you're doing all this stuff in college, you realize like, okay, I want to be a stand-up. Your dad tells you, uh, by the way, my dad was also a, a lawyer for many years, a corporate lawyer, and he, they were always like, what are you doing? Stop, not like, hey, you're silly people that make money. They're like, stop goofing around and get serious. But what, what are you doing from that moment? You graduate college, you got it in your mind you want to do comedy. You start teaching, though, yes. uh, instead for a while. Like, you, But while you're teaching, you have a foot out the door? Exactly, the whole time, I think. Um, I remember the first year I started teaching, uh, the teachers were like, watch Mr. Holland's opus. Yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were like, don't get stuck here. So um, <laughs> so, so I taught one, one year in Indiana and uh, at Franklin Elementary and then also uh, Edgar's Elementary. And so... One was like uh, in Whiting, and then one was in this other part of town, uh, Indiana. But it was a, a good 45-minute drive in between. And it was sweet because two days a week I had like a two-hour break <laughs> to drive in between schools. <laughs> and, uh, and one was like a white school, one was like a black school. It was amazing. So I taught there for a year. Then I got into a program called Teachers for Chicago where you get paid to teach, and they get you uh, your master's. Uh -huh. So I was getting my, I got my master's to teach for Chicago, and then you're supposed to be there for a few years, you know, committed to Chicago. That's amazing. And your master's was was in uh, mu was in music. Yes, music education. Gotcha. That's so wow. cool. T talk to me about was it was teaching these these kids these young kids was it uh, lovely on the whole or frustrating? Like yeah. how, I I always marvel at the patience. Yeah that uh, teachers of young, young, young children have. Um, you know, obviously I love, I love kids, but you spend yeah, sure, obviously, seven hours obviously. with kids, <laughs> with kids trying to teach them X, <laughs> Y, and Z, trying to figure out how to, how to, how to manage their, their attention yeah. and their focus. When the hand goes up, the mouth goes shut. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. How'd you do with that? Did you have like this teacher, my, uh, my youngest daughter, like they do this little you like there, there's like there's like there's clap signals to like you go quiet when you hear that. Like, did you have? How did you how did you manage with all that? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I would say like, uh, hey, yo, shut the fuck up. Yeah good yeah, yeah sure. that's efficient. Something yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. clap. It's, it's clear. That's very clear. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> I they were the most for the most part the kids were were cool. You know, uh -huh. um, then then there were there were a few classes. Uh, one class was like this this uh, special ed class, this behavior kind of thing, uh, where they had a security guard and a teacher in there all day until they came to music. So then with them, I had to like play the dozens and do your mama jokes and, and then jump in and be like, so anyway, Beethoven, you know. Um, right. You had to kind of hide it a little bit. That was that. But then uh, the other ones, you know, if you were interesting enough, they would sit and pay attention. And then if you weren't. Were there kids? Did you were you able to identify kids who who were like really talented and go like, oh, hey, God, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. And yeah. could you identify the kids that were the problems too? Well, I mean, there were kids who 
who just needed a little bit more than others. Yeah, yeah. 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 I needed yeah. you. I was a problem. I needed you. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have got kicked out so much. Yeah. But you, you turned out great. You turned out all right. You turned out okay. There was probably there were probably kids that were like that you probably didn't connect with like on a personality level too, but you had to, right? You're like, oh, uh, this a kid. Percent. Yeah, yeah. Coming in now, I can't stand this kid. And then you have to act like but you can't, <laughs> right? It's not that like because Tanner was just like they, they couldn't stand me. You know, they just didn't you in an authoritative authoritative position that Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, it just didn't sit well. What's with the me. worst punishment you ever gave to a kid? Mm -hmm. Worst punishment? I was, I was sending them back to their teacher. Yeah, it no, wasn't, that's it. I had them 40 minutes a week, uh -huh. you know? Were you trying any of your material out on these youngsters? Funny question. Mm -hmm. I did once I started uh, uh, learning, you know, really, really, I mean, you know, getting into comedy. I was, yeah. you know, obviously going to uh, the open mics weekly, nightly. And uh, yeah, I would practice my stagemanship. It wasn't necessarily the jokes right. that I would do. You know what I mean? Yeah, you've got a locked-in audience. They sure. have to be there. Yeah. They're not locked in. They do have to be there. You learn how to deal with hecklers, too. A little bit, yeah. You know, little shitty little eight-year-olds <laughs> running their mouths. Right? Jesus, man. Hey, dad of the year, cool. <laughs> <laughs> by, the, by the way, Maple gave me a great joke the other day. Uh, she said, uh, that's my 10-year-old, she said, uh, uh, how, do you, uh, how, how do you make holy water? I said, how? She goes, you boil the hell out of it. <laughs> that's good actually you can use that one tonight Craig that's free that's good tell her uh, ask her what kind of car did Jesus drive and what would she say a Chrysler we'll be right know, back so after these messages you're welcome um, no, wait, hang on a second so Craig yeah how did the office come about because yeah. that was what a question you were so thank you you were so uh i loved you on the office by the way and i've yeah. told you i always think you're a hilarious dude thank you bro but i loved you on the office tell me how did that what was that process Be before that too i remember okay. driving on the cbs radford lot and you were the car behind me or in front of me or something and i was like craig and you just moved to la i was like this is what you're in L.A. now? That's so cool. And then you said you were going on audition, audition, and then you just popped up on the office. It was just so awesome. And you know what you told me? You were like, tell me about all the auditions you went on and how you wanted to be <laughs> sitting in the corner with a razor blade, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, because it's just denial, denial, denial. You always get so close. So, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've thought about that actually a lot. Wow, that sounds like great advice, Sean, that you gave Craig. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, he, no, how you would be getting denied, and you'd be like, that's how you feel. Like, you just want to, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, right. I'm oh, gonna, that's the worst. Craig, welcome to LA. You're going to spend most of your time in a corner with a razor blade. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck. Oh, thanks, Sean. Thanks, old friend. Well, I mean, let me know how it goes. Tell me if you want to grab a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so the office is what, 2004, five, something like that? Yes. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. 2005, I think. There goes Mary Lou Arnett. I know I'm good with dates. Mm -hmm. So uh, was it just like a standard audition process on that, or uh, any uh, any anything colorful about that that process of landing that that sweet gig? So I went in and uh, <laughs> wow, full circle. Greg Daniels and I don't know thirteen other people sitting there. Greg front and center, and, and he goes, "I saw your video. Uh, you're talking about somebody's fucking my lady." Oh wow, yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, it was like, not getting any funnier than that, which probably should be a, a vote of confidence, a shot for me to, but for me, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, if it doesn't get any funnier, then this obviously is not going to be funny. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You should have shaken the, shaken the script pages and said, yeah, not with this shit, you know, and then just walked <laughs> out. Walked that would have killed. <laughs> so, so, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, they had us do the... One of the uh, uh, little model, the asides to the camera, what do they call it? Confessionals. And uh, they have to, you know, do do that paragraph. And, and Deadpan is like, I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, that's your thing. You know, like uh, Harvey Corman and uh -huh. Leslie. What's, what's Leslie Nelson from Police Squad? Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are my cats, man. So I went in there just like, so the office I thought was tailor made for. My style. Yeah. yeah. It sure so was. you do that, you do that audition, 
you do you do that uh, talking head and you do the deadpan thing for Greg and the 13 people in the room. You walk out and you think, what? Nailed it. I want to be on the, the office or or you let it go and just like on with my day. Oh, you got to got to let it go and move on. This, I didn't know. It was, it was another audition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would throw my script away or my sides away like this. Like, that'll show them. You know, like, I'm not going to think about that at all. And all you do is think about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would always, I would love to say uh, as I was leaving, good luck with this. Like, in other words, like, I'm going to not give myself this part before you not give this to me. I did it after every audition so bad. Really? Oh, God, the arrogance is so gross. Well, it, but it was also sort of like, you know, feigned humility. Like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not assuming I'm going to get this. And in the probability that I do not, please, good luck with this. Not a lot of people know this. Jason also invented prey hands. Yeah, yeah so, active prayer hands. I started that. Yeah, yeah. So, small bow, yeah. tiny small hands. Small bow, prayer hand. Uh-huh. The wor- the worst is when you put the audition out of your mind, and then you know two months later, your mom's like, "Hey, so what happened with the uh, Spider Man <laughs> audition? Did you get that?" Right. My mom's favorite uh, thing to always do is always just to sort of just let me know what A-list directors I should be working with. Oh. Well, you know what? You, you know what? You should do a film with Steven Spielberg. I'm like, oh, is that? It, it, that okay. Boy, hang on. Let me write this down. <laughs> like, my father would be like, you, you look like David Allen Gray. You should do something with him. A, call him. Call, call him up. <laughs> just call him okay. up. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Craig, uh, so what? How's your music passion nowadays? Are, yeah. are you? Uh, is it still? What? 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 what what's a bigger passion for you? The acting or the music? The music. It's always going to be the music. Still the music. Music really? is the first love. So yeah. what are you? What, what? What are you listening to mostly right now? What? What? At least what genre of music? Some Chris Rob. Chris Rob. It's my brother. That's his brother. Yeah. That's my brother. Yeah. And some Craig Rob. We, we've been working on something. Uh, that I don't know if it'll ever come out because I'm the head of it. But uh, we, we have several songs about ready to go. What's it sound like mostly? What what type is it? This Hard is a, rock? Well, it's, no, it's, our, it's, the first one is like a uh, kind of a smooth R&B. Smooth. All I want to do is love you, babe. Sure. So is it safe to say then that you act to pay the bills for your music passion and like follow that? Oh, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Uh-huh. Like so, like I'll do a bunch of comedy shows, and yeah. if I know the the band is going to do a show at a House of Blues and only get you know ten grand, I might might do a bunch of shows around there to make sure you know what I'm saying. House sure. of Blues still going? House of Blues still up and around? Yes. I thought it closed. Is it? Yeah. You know, I take that back. I resend, I resend my answer. I don't know. Okay. We'll, you don't we'll know. strike it. We'll strike that. We'll strike it. I'm sorry you're committed already yeah. to you. No, yes. no, we can yeah. strike it. Can, we you, can, can you re-ask me? Can you, can you re-ask me? <laughs> <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsor. I just wanted to say thank you to all form for their support. You have probably heard us mention how much we love our Helix mattresses and their new sofa company, All Form, does not disappoint either. All Form is the easiest way to customize a sofa using premium materials at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. Customize every aspect of your new sofa to ensure it's perfect for you and your home. Listen, with armchairs, love seats, and up to eight seat sectionals, there's something for everyone. What's cool is that you can start small and buy more seats later on if you want your All Form sofa to grow and change with you. All Form sofas are also delivered directly directly to your home with fast, free shipping, and you can also assemble it yourself in just a few minutes. I ordered the all-form five-seat corner sectional in light gray fabric and natural legs, and it's amazing. Well, what about my weighted blanket to keep me nice and settled? Yes, I love it. Now, if getting a sofa without trying it in store sounds a little risky, (laughs) stop worrying, you big baby. You get 100 days off to decide if you want to keep it. That's more than three months. And if you don't love it, they're going to pick it up for free, dry your tears, and give you a full refund. All right? Now, listen. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash smartless. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash smartless. Thank you. 
Thank you to Bombas for their support. Bombas' mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bombas, you are also giving to someone in need. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft, seamless, tagless, and has a luxuriously cozy feel. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, Pima cotton, and even cashmere, which makes them the perfect cozy layers. There's a pair of Bombas socks for everything you do. They come in tons of options, like comfy performance styles for every sport and activity that keeps you moving. I have my Bombas on now as we speak on my feet. I love them. They hug my feet like a nice warm hug that I never got from my father. And did you know that socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters? That's why Bombas donates one for every item you buy. Go to bombas.com slash smartly and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash smartless for 20% off. Bombas dot com slash smartless. Listener, their support are coming our way from Simply Safe. And uh, you guys know that we love the break-in protection that our Simply Safe home security system gives us. If I sound serious, it's because home security is serious and simply safe honors that seriousness with an incredible product but it's not always outside forces that you need simply safe's protection from this is joshua's story a simply safe customer from indiana a few months ago he fell asleep with pizza rolls in the oven now this could have been disastrous thousands of dollars in damage to his kitchen his home or worse Luckily, Joshua has a comprehensive Simply Safe system equipped with everything to prevent break ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires caused from unhealthy pizza rolls. He was startled when he awoke to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm from his Simply Safe base station. Seconds later, he got a call from Simply Safe professional monitoring, checking to make sure that everything was A OK with Josh. The pizza rolls didn't make it. But Joshua sure did. He believes Simply Safe saved not only his life that night, but unsightly pounds around his middle section. Protecting people when their guard is down is just one of the reasons more than 4 million people use and love Simply Safe. With a comprehensive Simply Safe system and 24 7 professional monitoring, you always have someone looking out for you. Plans cost under $1 a day with no long term contracts or hidden fees. Ever. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash smartless. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash smartless. And now back to the show. Craig, is there is there a dream project where you want to combine like music in like a f- dream film of yours or is there a dream role? That- or musical theater, Sean? Six, anything? seven, eight. Do you, but can you think of anything that Craig could just fall right into, like yeah, a, a million beautiful things. glove? A million things. How about Promises, Promises? I saw that on Broadway. Did you Did you see it? I did. Yes, that's very sweet of you to come. I remember that. Um, do you, it was amazing. You were amazing. In it. Thank, thank you, thank you. He was amazing, and I saw it as well. Would you like to do a run on Broadway? Oh, I would love it. Yeah, absolutely. Really? What about you? Maybe what, Sean, what could you and Craig do together? That's what would be idea. a great two-hander. Stir Crazy, the musical. Yeah. Wait a minute. <gasps> Wait, what? Wait, Craig. That's, that's a, a really good idea. That's a great idea. Well, who's someone's going to steal that right now? You guys have how many weeks before we air no, this episode the, he, to write he, it? He, they can't steal it. He, they can't steal it. He's already, he's already got it. That's he a good idea, it. Craig. Who holds the rights for that? <laughs> Craig owns it, and now Sean works for Craig. Hey, listen, <laughs> this is a great idea. I'm here. We're witnesses. Craig's dad's a lawyer. We're going to get the papers drawn up. Here, but well, that was fast. That was very fast. Uh, do you like that idea really of going idea. to Broadway and doing eight shows a week and all the rehearsal and all that stuff? I had a taste of it uh, a few years back with uh, Chris Rock. We were doing uh, a Pearly, and it wasn't even the, the musicals. And uh, it was Chris Rock and, uh, oh, fuck, I wish I could remember everybody's name. Mm-hmm, Kimberly, Bear, and then some real heavy hitter Broadway people. And then Bo, what's Bo's brother? Bridges, Bo, Bo Bridges. Bo Bridges, yeah. Played my Bo dad. Bridges was in it, too. So they flew us to New York. Played my dad, too. And we were there for, like... You know, a whole week just rehearsing the shit out of this play. And then the first day, this big producer comes in. He also does music. Can't think of his name. Big time director was working with us throughout the week. And the last day he came in. So, you know, first let's see where it was. 
from the beginning to the end. So it, I, I wouldn't mind. I, I didn't mind. I know it wasn't a you know rigorous. But they did. They did. Ultimately, they did not end up doing the play. Is that the deal? Yeah, we. We. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think it was because of COVID. You know what I think it is, and this is. I'm just guessing. Uh, you know what I think it happened? What happened? I think that maybe because you couldn't remember anybody's name. Yeah, <laughs> maybe if you <laughs> remember like, some of the names. Yeah. They were, they I mean, were, it came to me eventually. All the names I thought sure. of just came to me. It's too late. Me. No, they moved on. Rick Rubin is that a is <laughs> Rick Rubin? Sure. <laughs> It's a pretty big was, name. <laughs> was, that's, was, he was a part of it, and it did not go forward. <laughs> Is Rick Rubin in the music industry? And I think Scott Rudin was producing it, and uh, Rubin, Sam Mendes, I think, was directing but and we, they did not go forward. Like the biggest <laughs> names, and Craig's like, I'm sorry, one more time with your name. <laughs> so you have not yet tested your stamina in a, in a Broadway run yet. Is that correct? I have not. I have not. I have done 14 shows a week doing comedy, though. Whoa. Yeah, well, there you go. Something. That's something. That's something. So. Wow. Two that, two shows a night. That's a lot. Sean is just coming off. Sean's starting. He's embarking. I don't know. You heard us uh, yammering on earlier. He just got unbelievable reviews there at the Goodman in Chicago, like unbelievable. And he's and he's being very modest about it. And I ended up tweeting out the, his review because I'm that's just very so sweet. proud of him because I just love him. Congratulations, Sean. Thank you. Well, thank what are you, you in? It's a new show called Good Night Oscar. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Still holding. <laughs> Uh, and still holding. And <laughs> so this is about this is about the the movie industry completely um, going away, <clears throat> and it only being television, right? And just and therefore just the Emmy uh, Emmy Awards. Oh, I see. Good night, Oscar. There we go. Oh no, I'm oh, Jason. Good for you. Oh, Thanks. That that's fun. This no, is, that's a stuff, fun joke, Jason. We need stuff to cut. <laughs> so, Craig. You mentioned Greg Daniels. So you work with Greg on The Office mm -hmm. and also with Mike Schur on The Office. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, our, sure. Our old friend. And then Mike uh, goes on to do Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which you mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. with Mike and Dan Gore, who created it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have tremendous success on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and then you and Dan Gore start a new show together that's coming out soon on Peacock. Del Chidichi. It might already be out. Right? Yes, yes. Called? Killing It. Killing, Killing it. 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 So you've reunited with the great Dan Gore, whom I also know from, from Parson Rec, who's a uh, absolutely hilarious guy. Agreed. And how, do you, how did Killing It come about? This is about the singing hitman, yes? <laughs> Guys. That's what I thought about. They're just, they come so fast, and I just got to share them with you. And uh, anyway, continue. That's what they say. That's what the ladies say. No. <laughs> Craig, please, cut him off. Uh, uh, well, I had a meeting with Dan. He was like, dude, you know, we love working with you. And you, your best part about a lot of the things that you're in, let's, let's figure something out. So uh, I, Mark Schumann, my manager. Mm. Happy birthday, Mark. It's his birthday today. But this hey, one. Mark. But, um, uh, and then uh, Luke Del Tredici. Did I say it right? Luke. We, uh, we all got together, you know, and then they kept pitching. They were pitching these ideas. And like, well, which... You know, and it was a musical idea, or so this idea, and this, and then uh, there was this this really interesting thing about snake killing in Florida, yeah, where people were killing snakes for money because they're overrun. Because back in the day, drug dealers would buy them to be, you know, like Scarface would have you, but then they send them out, and nothing eats the snakes; they eat everything. Mm -hmm. So um, they need that's them. the show. Uh, You're a snake that's killer. That's the show. Come on, where to go? Hang on a second. <laughs> The cock is putting up a, a snake killer hitman. The cock. This is, this is, this is, yeah, do it for the cock. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is a, Jason, this is actually not a terrible idea of rebranding for Peacock to go <laughs> simply as the cock. The cock. <laughs> or maybe, and it's coming next on the cock. Oh. Uh. No? <laughs> coming I out. That's good. No, wait. Hey, we, we got it. Hang on. We're all around it. Let's just we're, hold on yeah, a second. Yeah, we are here. really close. Streaming, we are streaming it. from the cock. Yeah. Um, right? Mm -hmm. sure, I think yeah. we got it. There we have it. Yep. Okay. So continuing. So you're literally a snake killer. Mm -hmm. Come on. Kill snakes. Yeah. Craig, that's the pitch. I start, I you, have, start. you have the world listening right now. <laughs> I'm giving off. you one more shot. <laughs> <laughs> literally killing snakes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what it is. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. <laughs> well, and what time can we find this on? It's streaming, it's streaming on the cock. It's streaming, it's streaming on the cock. It's streaming on the cock. It's streaming on the cock. It's going to be on mid-April. 
Okay. Okay. We got a lot of interesting things coming from the cock this season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. On the cock stream. <laughs> Um, so, so you're, okay, but listen, come on. Listen. Wait, I want to talk about, like, what about no. ladies in your life? Like, are you dating anybody, anybody special in, in the Craig Robinson? No, I'm single AF. Okay. You're single AF? Should we be on the lookout for you? No, 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 I'm, I'm happily okay. single. Got it. Well, what does that mean? When you say you're happy single, does that mean that you've got it all worked out? You've got, you're swiping on certain nights, you're no. going out to certain clubs on other nights, <laughs> certain bars on the nights, and you've got a great routine going. No dating anything at this point whatsoever. No so dating? Zero, yeah. Why? How what's, no the, what's, what's behind that? No distractions, just <laughs> enjoying. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very busy, and it's... Uh, Mm. It's all good. It's because, like, in the past uh, last year or so, like, like people, women would get mad at me and just be like, break up. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother podcast. But okay. it's, it's, <laughs> they've been, you know, removing themselves from my life. So it's, it's brought me a peace. That I'm like, oh, this is, this is nice. And then so maybe... I gotta Did you out. maybe instead maybe think about why you were upsetting these women um, and, and therefore be able to continue dating women? Bro, that's just, there's a whole other podcast. It's, Don't it's, put it on, Craig. Okay, here, how about that? I'll tell you this. One girl hit me, she was it's like... It's got to be Craig's fault. Why, why, why have you never uh, put me in anything but gave me a job? Huh. This, is one of the, this is the question. Uh-oh. And I'm wow. like, well, what? And I, and, I, and I said, well, you don't sing or do comedy or... Play music, you know she texted back. I'm playing music right now. Because I'm in, like Oh, she was just listening to music. <laughs> She's like, I'm playing music right now. So, so then she was like, I'm, I'm you know what? I'm fine with not not speaking with you. Like, okay, then. But then take this other girl who I just met in New York, who has wrote me a whole show and like like came to see my show. And I'm like, well, here's somebody I could use on the squad. Yeah. This girl's amazing. Sure. Yeah. Kind of and then what happened? Oh no, we we, we stayed in touch. Oh, oh so but, okay, but so that's you're ro not oh. romantically. Not romantically. So you got her on ice romantically, but look, I, I put like this: I got my eye on somebody, but I'm not, you know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. that's fair enough. That's fair okay. enough. But, we're not going to push you. Right, so it's, it's fun. It's fun to have a crush. Did your mom and dad give you any pressure? Like, come on, Craig. Is your mom like all over you about settling down? No. Mm -hmm. No. Living my life. You're living your life. You're happy. <laughs> now, is... Uh, living my life like this gold. Was dad ever pissed off that you weren't going into corporate law and that you were going into comedy and music instead? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Not, not pissed that I wasn't going into corporate law, but he, uh, he saw this as pie in the sky. Yeah. And I think his, his quote was, you're going to lose that good job. Right. And now, uh, now you've proven him wrong. And now, does he give it up? Does he say, uh, I, was, I was wrong, you were right, good for you? I don't think he'll ever say that. There's always there's always something he's you know twisting the needle. Right, right. They they don't know you. The parents they, know they know, you know how to do that. Don't they? Like the white people don't. They, they don't. The black people don't know you that well, huh? And then <laughs> uh, people don't really want your autograph. And then you people start wanting autograph. People don't. It's always something right. right to keep going. Right, right, right. Well, it keeps you hungry, right? Keep chasing yeah. the approval. But I think that that's that's a parenting style. I think you're right. It's just like. If they give it up, then they think that you're gonna get yeah. lazy or something, or, or you know what I mean. So they're like, they're like, in their mind, it's like even even subconsciously, they're like, I'm motivating him. And I feel like I'm doing the opposite, and it's wrong. I'm making a mistake. I'm 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 the I'm the problem. Like the whole participation award thing. I think I'm complimenting my kids too quickly uh, for uh, what is at some some sometimes just mediocrity, right? In 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 a, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unkind view of things. But I'm I'm trying to say, well, that was great. We, we keep doing, keep doing more. But am I am I am I conditioning them for an unrealistic world where they're going to get uh, applauded for just doing the norm? I think it's a balance, like everything. I think it's a balance. You got to praise them and you got to teach them, right? Craig, when you were teaching these kids, would you would you give them uh, would you give them a pat on the back for a C or would you wait for at least a B? Oh, you gotta no. Sean hit it on the head. You definitely gotta praise him, and you gotta teach him. Uh, I could tell you, my uh, my niece and nephew, you know, they they want to be in the business, and uh, my niece was was like, "Here, I have an idea. It's a, it's a dope dope idea." And then she told me the idea, and it was like there was no there was zero development. 
Put it like that. <laughs> and it was, you know, and you, you have to show something. You say, yeah, I'm, I'm writing. And then you got to explain to them, hey, when you take these scripts in, you're competing against people who are going to school for scripts and this, that, and the other. So it's it's hard to, because um, I know some of the stuff comes off harsh, but I, I do let them know that, or, or both of them know that, hey, you, you can do this. It's, yeah. it's it's not as easy as you think it is. Are you more, are you like into the business of the business at all, Craig? Or are you more like a hands-off, call me when it's, the cake is made? Do you have the deadline app? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like the I like the made cake. I, I have my hands are in, in some things, but uh, for the mo- like my band and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, I, I, but the acting thing and the and the and the whole Hollywood thing, you're just like just call me if something comes in. Exactly. You're not like one to seek out development and put projects together and write that. Nothing, nothing I, like there, that. There's been a, a couple of things, but yeah, I'm not not enough. To, it's like somebody say, "Hey, you play the drums? Look, I can keep a beat." Mm-hmm. Right? right, but I'm not a drummer. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Got it. Got it. So yeah, I've I've, I've have had my hand a couple of things. Who, for the most part, things will come and be like, okay. Let's you know let's see that through. Yeah, that's a you know. And I'm sorry, just to, just to interrupt for one second, Jason. Any uh, interesting uh, developments in any of the trades this morning? <laughs> well, listen, uh, everyone is really monitoring the uh, you know the merger there at the uh, Warner Brothers and uh, sure. Discovery Plus. And, 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 but no, no, no big, no big uh, Helmers ankled any projects this morning. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, listen, Disney's still having trouble with Ankle. the uh, you know don't say gay thing, and everyone's keeping their eye on that. They got a retreat coming up here, and so there's a problem with the uh, sure. Excellent. And you Excellent. get alerts. You yeah. definitely get alerts. Oh, sure. Sure. Well, hang on. I have a, I have a, instead of a date, uh, uh, what is it called? Deadline, deadline app. I have a Bateman app. Yeah. yeah. It just really gives me the highlights. Of the <laughs> anytime, anytime I have anything in the trades, uh, the first person to uh, congratulate me is uh, Jason. That was a long time ago, Will. <laughs> Remember when you used to compliment me when I had releases? Yeah. <laughs> there used to be a lot of support. Well, I don't read the trades anymore. I should. I probably should. I don't either. So, so tonight's show is a, a combination of music and of jokes. Yes. 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 I really want to come see it. So May fourth, I, I will. I will see that. May four at the Troubadour. Yeah. May four the Troubadour. That's not hard to remember. No, I'm so that's happy good. the Troubadour is back in action because it feels like it was closed there for a minute. No confirmation, Jason. Yeah, yeah. anyone? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think there was a virus that was going around for a little while. The world was uh, that no, I don't think so. Sure. No, I'll, let yeah. me check deadline. Uh, so, killing it, Craig Robinson is coming out. It's going to be available on the cock, streaming on the cock. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Man, I'm excited to see it. I love everything you do. You're such a hilarious dude. And on top of it all, and it's not a, you can't always say this about everybody. You're a super nice guy. And every time yeah. I see you, you're one of those guys that when you see you're like, I'm so happy to see Craig yeah, Robinson. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. You got a good vibe. Mm-hmm. Say the same for all yeah. of you guys. Great Thank vibe, you. dude. We wish you all the best. We've taken up way too much of your time. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, uh, thanks for being here, Craig. It's always so fun to see you. Pleasure was mine, yo. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Craig. Craig. Thank you, pal. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Bye. <laughs> Craig Robinson. Craig, Craig Robinson, Craig. super Craig. fun. I, I got to see... You keep I, saying Craig. No, I did Craig. Craig Robinson. Oh, did you say Craig? Okay. Yeah. I mean, my G is 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 C adjacent, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, that reminds me of, uh, I think, a dumb joke I told before. <laughs> well, I'm definitely telling it again. My new company, <laughs> it, we're, we're, uh, we're working on... Uh, mold is, is big, so it's, uh, it's called uh, adjacent abatement. Um, that uh-huh. we are... Uh, That's really tight. Uh, <laughs> share that one with Maple. Yeah, uh, so uh, so I got to see the snake killing show. Yeah. Um, I, I want to know how they're, um, they're shaping 30 minutes of entertainment weekly <laughs> on that. I, I want to see that. That's a challenge. Although anybody, if anybody could do it, it's Craig because he's so... Uh, what, he was one of those... I loved his character, Daryl, on The Office. He was so funny. Yeah. He was so straight-faced. He, he kind of... Oftentimes felt like the only one who he and uh, our buddy Kraz uh, playing Jim over there, they were the only two who weren't completely insane. Um, and Jenna, obviously, who played Pam. Uh, now I've just named three characters. But 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 he he seemed to be the guy who was always like... And he really enjoyed... I love the dynamic between him and Michael Scott because uh, mm-hmm. Daryl kind of would... Uh, 
egg him on, to, you know, Carell's character to do stupid things. And I Isn't just, that, but don't you think it's, I know, I gone, I've gone on too much about it. We both had the exact same major in college, and we both followed the exact same path. Isn't that weird? Is it because there's no money to be made uh, as a classical pianist? Well, there's that, but I, I didn't really think about that before when I was young, but... Well, great, Jason. You just enraged eight people <laughs> on the planet. I'm joking. There, <laughs> eight of people. course, there's great money to be made we, there. We, and, yeah, and no, but he he always made me laugh. And, yeah, he made me laugh so hard in in college, and and uh, we would always hang out and make each other laugh. It was, it's just so wild to see his journey. What, it's funny. It's funny that you guys have been on this journey for so long, kind of together, like a Jason, and you come in and out of each other's lives. Yeah. And now goes. that there you're goes. older, there to comes. look back there and you comes. both, no, there's no but. It's just been, you guys have both been really successful, and it, that's kind of rare. Yeah, it is rare. Um, we used to walk down the halls and sing the harmony I thought you were backing into a bye there, sorry. I know, yeah, no, too. No, yeah. We no, used to no, sing no. the harmony to more than words. Do you remember that song? How, how, mm -hmm. I'm usually, I'm not great with those kinds of songs, like pop songs. I'm usually uh -oh. better with la la. <gasps> Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was well done. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.